Gran Turismo is a very deep racing game. You can tell even before you place the game into the PS1. It comes with a 60-page full-color instruction manual, as well as a 60-page full-color reference manual. The game itself took five years to develop. The subtitle, which only appears on the title screen, is The Real Driving Simulator. That pretty much describes what the game is, a driving simulator containing 140 realistic cars from the mid-1990s. I first saw this game around the time of its release. My roommate was playing it on our shared PlayStation, and I remember being turned off by how technical the game looked. I was more into straightforward racing games, so I never attempted to play Gran Turismo. Now, after all these years, I finally decided to give the game a try. In fact, this is the first time I've ever played a game in the Gran Turismo series. After playing through the entire game, I now understand how this forever changed the racing genre. The heart of the game is the simulation mode, where you play your way through a racing career, earning money along the way. When you start off, you only have enough money to buy a used car, but as you participate in races, you'll earn cash to allow you to buy better cars and perform upgrades on them. This in turn allows you to win more races, which increases your cash flow even more. You'll soon be able to buy cars that are fast enough to enter some of the more challenging races. It's this cycle of racing, upgrading, and unlocking that makes the game addicting. As your garage fills up with cars, you'll discover that they all handle differently just as they would in real life. Certain cars will leave your opponents in the dust, while others will have you struggling to keep up with the last place car. Graphics wise, the game is starting to show its age. The surroundings jiggle around a little bit, but once you reach a high speed on the track, things look a lot smoother. There's a couple of beautiful night courses that stand above the rest, although it doesn't feel like you have your headlights on. Either way, the courses do convey the feeling of being on an actual racetrack, and the overall game is definitely a technical masterpiece when you consider how old it is. Being able to save replays and watch them from different angles probably blew a lot of people's minds back then. The music in the game is awesome, there's no other way to describe it. It captures the spirit of racing perfectly. In order to have access to all the races in the simulation mode, you will have to pass three license tests. Each test has eight smaller tests within it. Most of them involve getting to the finish line within a certain time. You can't go off the track, for the most part, and there are no other cars on the road. Whether it was intentional or because I suck at driving, I found some of these tests to be nearly impossible to pass. There were times when I almost gave up on the game. Luckily I persevered and was able to get all three licenses, but the idea of taking tests in order to access the entire game is not something I'd want to see more of in video games. In addition to the simulation mode, there is an arcade mode, which is a quicker way to play the game. There are a small number of cars to select from, but you can't upgrade them, which saves a lot of time. It's a fun way to race, and I enjoyed the fact that it has unlockable content to shoot for. Also in an arcade mode, two players can race against each other. It's a split screen, and you and your friend have the only two cars on the road. The graphics are obviously downgraded, but the handling of the car still remains intact. 
The simulation mode also has a two-player race, referred to as Memory Card Battle. Your opponent is supposed to bring over their memory card containing the cars they have unlocked by playing the simulation mode on their own. However, since most people are not carrying around their old Gran Turismo save data, it's better to just copy one memory card's data over to the other, giving both players access to the same cars. The two-player races can be very one-sided, since some cars are better than others, and new players need time to get used to the way the different cars handle. Overall, the two-player races are best enjoyed by two seasoned Gran Turismo players. I probably should have played Gran Turismo a long time ago when it came out in 1998, but playing through it today is still an incredible experience. The amount of detail put into it has changed my perception of what is possible in a racing game. I do have qualms about the license test, but overall I think the game is a must-have for PS1 fans.